When they looked at the Grizzlies and Spurs was talking John Morant, but it was Valanciunas who was the real problem. And I think they have their work cut out for them. Um, Steph Curry has been playing at a very high level. And I do think that when push comes to shove, he will be clearly the best player on the floor and will decide the outcome and the Warriors will win. Um, I think that Wiggins especially has shown that he can be a real two-way force. And Draymond Green was a beast defensively. But I don't see this as a gimme. I see this as a tough game for the Warriors. Max, I actually agree that this is going to be a tough game. And I'm actually on the other side of this coin. I actually believe that the Grizzlies will be able to pull this one out tonight. I'm really, really excited to see one Dylan Brooks do his best job in terms of slowing down Steph Curry, who obviously is the supreme X factor in this narrative. But I really think, I agree with you, Valanchunas, 23-23 and 23 in the first play-in game. He's a guy that averages a double-double. He's averaging 19 and about 14 rebounds, I believe, against the Warriors in particular. I just think considering what happened to this Grizzlies unit last year and the youth, I know sometimes youth can be a double-edged sword, but I actually think in this instance, not only does the youth benefit them, but the fact that they just saw this team to finish out the regular season, I think we're going to see a different outcome than we did in the regular season. Mm. Stephen A., where are you on this? Um, I'm going with Steph Curry. I'm going with Steph Curry. And, and I, at some point in time, John Morant can't get, you know, he's got to step up and, and, and when he's, I mean, he had 35 in a closeout game against Portland last year in the bubble. We know what he's capable of doing. I'm not taking anything away from him. And I too am a fan of Dylan Brooks. I like Dylan Brooks a lot. I like, I like how he goes after it. I like how he competes um, and he can play. He, and Valanchunas had 23 rebounds uh, last night. Let's not forget that 23 points, 23 rebounds. So he's a big who plays big and that could be problematic for an undersized uh, Golden State Warriors team, but I think that when the game is going to be in San Francisco, when you're talking about Steph being on his home turf, when you're talking about him being the shooter that he is and what he brings to the table, I think that potentially could be too much for the Grizzlies to overcome in this particular situation, especially with the way that they played last night, Golden State played last night. Remember, it wasn't good enough to beat the Lakers, but that would have been good enough to beat the Grizzlies. Yeah, I mean, I mean, DeMar DeRozan was missing everything. <laughs> And if that's Steph Curry taking those shots, those are going in. And they're going in from three. I, I think in the end, the best player on the floor determines series like this. And I think in this game, that's Steph Curry by a factor of something. I'm not going to disagree with you guys on Steph being the best player. But I do have a slightly different perspective on the toll that both initial games took on both of these teams. I think the Warriors put out their best effort and came up short. I think that they have a tougher challenge in terms of bouncing back, yes, it is at home in the Chase Center, than an upstart Grizzly squad who played terrific against the San Antonio Spurs. I just think momentum's on their side. It feels like if there was ever going to be a year where one of the younger teams kind of took one from an established superstar, feels like this is the moment to me. That, that would be bad for Steph, guys. If they, like, you know, you would think that this is just a gravy year for Steph because, you know, the team has been really hurt by injury and anything he accomplishes is to his credit and whatever they come up short is not his fault and all that. But at this point, you push the Lakers to the brink. The Lakers are favored to get out of the West. They're favored against the number two Suns by a lot, right, by the second-seeded Suns by a lot. And at this point, I actually think if that's the case, Monica, then Steph actually does have something to lose. I think it I think it takes some luster off his season if he can't lead this team through the winner of the 9-10 game. I think that's actually bad for Steph. Well, listen, I'll tell you this. Mo Monica does give me cause to pause because she knows what she's talking about. And by the way, keep doing the great job that you've been doing, girl. I've been watching. Uh, having said all of that, Thank you. I'm still <laughs> going to disagree with you respectfully <laughs> on this particular one uh, because I think that there's levels to this. And I think that when we look at the Memphis Grizzlies, you know one of those teams that's just got talent and they're tough and they're going to scratch and they're going to fight and they're going to be there and they're not an easy out but you know they're going down anyway. That's what the Grizzlies always give you the impression of when it really, really counts. It's like last year watching them in the bubble when they went up against Dame and, and the Blazers. I just said, I'm looking at them. Great game. It was a great game down to the wire. But somehow, somewhere, even with John Morant doing what he did, you just knew that Dame and CJ would find a way. 
because it was Memphis that they were going against. And that's the kind of feeling that you have thinking about Memphis about to go up against Steph Curry and Golden State. And let's not forget Jordan Poole, who the Warriors are very, very high on. They're excited about his prospects and what he's going to bring to the table. Uh, even when Klay Thompson comes back, the fact that you've got him in the mix, they're excited about him. Andrew Wiggins showed up last night. What if he does that again? What if he gives you another 21? What if he plays the exceptional defense that he's played? Who's that guy? Who's that closer? And just weeks ago, Monica, you know this. Uh, John, John Morant was in a game. I think it was against the Warriors, but I'm not sure where he was so disgusted with himself because they had backed off of him and dared him to shoot jump shots. Doris Burke was talking to me about that last night. So I think about that, and John Morant is electrifying, great athlete, finisher, got a lot of heart, reigning rookie of the year. But at some point in time, particularly in the playoffs, when defense is slow, they get back and they turn you into a half-court team, even though, even though Memphis is accustomed to that. You got to be able to hit perimeter shots, especially against De Steph Curry. Yeah. And if you don't do that, it could cost you. You're not wrong, Stephen A. Um, and in fact, in that regular season game, job was 7 of 21. Woo. He definitely has to be able to hit shots. But I don't know, y'all. And this basketball analysis aside, I just think this Memphis team is young. They're gritty. They were in this spot last year. I love the way Jaron Jackson has returned to the floor. I think if he can hit shots throughout the course of the game against the Spurs, he was hot early and kind of went a little bit quiet. I just think that they're playing with house money. And I heard you guys discussing Brad's comments, Brad Stevens' comments about the Celtics and the Nets matchup. To me, it's the same kind of deal, right? Like, internally, we know that this is a behemoth of a task. We fully understand what the Warriors represent and how hot Steph Curry has been. But... I just feel like this could be the moment. I, I tell you what, in terms of a young team that could knock off a giant, I think this is it. I don't, see, I don't think we see it anywhere else in the playoffs. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.